But the key factor is what happened after 2014, the Russian aggression demonstration that Putin is not to be trusted. I believe this is not just the Ukrainian context, but an international war, because these history wars are waged in Ukraine and on the histor European arena as well. If Ukrainians are getting more information and becoming more critical when assessing the past events, the discourse in Russia hasn't changed. In its international platforms, the Russia is still propagating the same narratives. So how do we prevail on the international arena with uh, how do we beat the historical myths. I believe we need to spread the information. Ukraine is not participating in the memory war. This is what Russia is doing in full disregard of the real historical fact. But there is an important message to the Ukrainian governmental official, something that may not go down well in the West. It's about commemorating the tragedy of Babi Yar, which is a common tragedy for Jews and Ukrainians and others. My grandma uh, was a Jewish and all her relatives perished. She was the only one who survived as she was evacuated. This hurts me a lot, and I have the right to say so. There are two ways to commemorating the Babi Yar in Ukraine. One developed by the State Academic Institute of History, supported by the experts, Ukrainian and Jews alike, and the second, which is a so-called private project, which is uh, promoted by three Russian oligarchs, which we have not seen, but they have already started an illegal construction, and they're building on a cemetery, they're building on the bones, which is prohibited by the Jewish laws and just by humane laws. The construction is um, conducted illegally, and I would like to use this opportunity to attract the attention of the Kyiv mayor and the Kyiv uh, city administration to the problem. Uh, so what are the red lines or the markers that we should be following with this project? We need to follow the law unwaveringly, and the president has supported the private project. He appointed the head of the working group, a person from his secretariat, who refused to meet the people advocating the public project. So my first beseech to the president and to the government, why don't you give the developers a chance to present it? And secondly, when we are building such a tragic memorial in a national reserve law. We have to do so consistently with the national law. And the government should hold the majority shareholding. It shouldn't belong to the Russian oligarchs, but it should be owned by the Ukrainian state. So as far as I know, we should be using the supervisory councils as a way to monitor. We need to, uh, to have a public steering committee to monitor the project. The Russia is going to use it for its narrative. Any development around Babi Yar will be used to discredit the role of Ukrainians in World War II or the role of Ukrainians these days, saying, oh, they don't want to have a, to commemorate the Babi Yar tragedy, and they want to misappropriate. It's a tragedy for the Jewish people and for the many other nationals who perished in Babi Yar. It's a global problem, and if the this discourse can attract attention to the issue in good time. Perhaps we can prevail by explaining. The time is limited. The tragedy which happened in late September is approaching fast, and those private builders are racing ahead with the construction is done illegally in disregard of the Ukrainian laws and public opinion. The calls on the government to create a, 
an urgent council for the public project could include the representatives of the private project too. And our request to President Zelensky to support the initiative instead of appointing one project implemented by Russian oligarchs. Going back to the issue of disinformation and building a bridge into the following detailed panel to follow our conversation, I'd like to pose you a question. How would you what flagrant myths would you identify that are propagated by Russia against Ukraine, both modern Ukraine and Ukraine as part of the Soviet Union? Well, they would say that we are nationalists, fascists, and anti Semites. Let me, uh, I can see it, uh, your words quoted on the media. Well, <coughs> Apart from Israel, um, we uh, can fully rebut uh, the myth that we are anti-Semites. We need to talk about the complexity of World War II. It's no easy narrative, but it's uh, doable. There's a good generation of analysts and historians who can really sort it out. In the laboratory of journalists, uh, together with our British colleagues Peter Pomerantsev and Internuser Crane, we conducted our own study, how do we transition from the memory to a constructive dialogue about history. And let me make a small teaser for the next panel, as I'm sure it's going to be brought up during the next panel. We should talk why these myths go down and go down into the values held by Ukrainians and how do we see ourselves in this context. I'd like to thank Oleksiy Harany for his data, for sharing the good news with us. I'd like to thank you now and bring in the moderator for the next panel.